whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my gosh, I'm starting to doze off. But I need to stay awake. Fortunately, I've got a nifty energy drink here. Uh, this is supposed to keep me awake. Uh, according to the, the manufacturers, it, it, it gives me some kind of wings, uh, monstrous wings. And, and look at all the, the great stuff it's got in it. Let's hold this up here. It's got vitamins. Uh, it's got uh, carnitine. It's got taurine. Those, those, those are really, really cool chemical names. And well, because they're so prominently listed on the can, the, these things absolutely must give you energy or else they wouldn't list them, right? Right? Well, let's look at that, shall we? Just because these things are listed on the label, people automatically assume that since they're mentioned, these must be the things that give you the energy. But that's not really the truth. Remember that fellow that made his fortune selling head-on? Head-on, applied directly to the forehead. Head-on, applied directly to the forehead. Head-on, applied directly to the forehead. Applied directly to the forehead. It didn't do anything. He never claimed that it did anything. All he did was breathlessly tell you to apply it to your forehead. And people imagined that it had all sorts of health benefits. Oh, some people said it cures headaches. It's good for migraines. It'll cure impotency. It'll cure the kraup, the dropsy. It'll cure leprosy. Who knew? But just because you're supposed to apply it directly to your forehead, it was good for you. Or else they wouldn't have mentioned it, would they? Well, that's the same sort of marketing tactic that the makers of energy drinks use when they list all these uh, immensely interesting chemical names here. Oh, they're long and they're, they're chemically sounding. Let's go through the list, shall we? Well, the first thing on here is B vitamins, it says. B vitamins. Okay. Well, there are four B vitamins that are listed. Riboflavin, that's vitamin B2. Uh, niacin, that's vitamin B3. Uh, vitamin B6 and vitamin B12. Let's look at these guys. I, I happen to have uh, gotten some numbers off the National Institutes of Health uh, website. They have all sorts of tables and other sciencey things there that, that list the uh, USRDA, that is recommended daily allowance, and the tolerable upper intake, the upper limit before they start harming you of a lot of different things. Well, according to Monster, it gives you 100% per serving of these things. Well, let's see. The USRDA of riboflavin, that's 1.3 milligrams, I see. And it doesn't have a tolerable upper limit. Nobody's ever studied it because it's never been a problem. Uh, vitamin B12, the USRDA is 2.4 milligrams. Also, doesn't have a tolerable upper limit because... As far as we know, there isn't one. These are B vitamins, by the way. They're water-soluble. Chances are any excess is just going to get washed out of your body. Vitamin B6. Now, that one does have a tolerable upper limit. Its USRDA is 1.3 milligrams. The tolerable upper limit, though, is 100 milligrams. Now, let's get to one of my favorites. Vitamin B3, niacin. The USRDA of niacin is 16 milligrams, and that's per serving. Oh, but look at this. Servings per container, two. So I don't know anybody who's going to drink half the can and then put the rest in the refrigerator and drink it the next day. You grab this thing, you down the whole thing. So you actually are getting two servings. So you're getting 32 milligrams of niacin. Well, guess what? The tolerable upper intake level for niacin is 35 milligrams for the average adult male. It goes up and down depending on your age and your gender, but basically with one 16 ounce can of Monster Energy that I have here, uh, you are getting very, very close to what your body can safely tolerate for niacin. Uh, if you have too much niacin, it can have interesting effects. Uh, according to the Mayo Clinic, uh, an overdose of niacin can cause skin flushing. That's the big one. It can cause rapid heartbeat. Hmm. And it can possibly cause liver damage. So uh, you don't want to get too terribly much of that. 
However, again, it's a B vitamin. Primarily, small excesses are going to be flushed out of your body. Now, let's go into these yeah, interesting chemically sounding names up here. We've got the L-carnitine and the taurine. Let's start with the taurine. Here's taurine. It's a fairly little molecule that, uh, according to myth, is extracted from bull semen. Well, this story is bull. It is actually extracted from bull bile. Uh, it's found in very high concentrations in heart and muscle cells in the human body. So it naturally exists in our cells. It's synthesized in the liver. Your body is loaded with it. There were studies that were done that tried to test the effect of a combination of taurine and caffeine on performance and sleepiness. They had various results, but primarily what they discovered was that taurine plus caffeine had pretty close to the same effect as caffeine by itself. So the taurine really isn't doing an awful lot. The one study that I found that concluded that taurine has a positive effect on alertness and wakefulness was sponsored by these people. You guessed it, the ones who want to give you wings. Speaking of bull bile, <laughs> no, there is no solid evidence that taurine does anything. Yes, it occurs naturally in our bodies, but eating more of it doesn't really appear to do terribly much. Well, okay, how about this one? This is L-carnitine. L-carnitine also exists naturally in our muscles. There are some reports that L-carnitine is very, very low in patients who exhibit fatigue, and it's extremely low in patients who exhibit what we call chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, the thought then is, if you swallow a bunch of it, you won't be fatigued. Actually, that is true. That is one of the therapies they have for chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, you have to take a gram of it twice a day, that's a thousand milligrams, for four to eight weeks before you start seeing an effect, and even then, all the literature says there is some effect. So, swallowing however much they're going to put in this, over an hour is not going to have any real effect on you. You're just going to have a stomach full of carnitine, which will go away on its own after some time. Um, there was a study done at the University of Maryland Medical Center to see if it had any effect on athletic performance, and uh, the uh, results of that study can be summarized in one word. So apparently, the taurine the B vitamins, and the L-carnitine, which are so prominently labeled on this can here, really have no effect on your energy levels. They're not going to give you wings. They're not going to allow you to lift a car or whatever the commercials say you can do. And they're not going to increase athletic performance. But there's something in here that's not listed on the label, except it's buried way down in the ingredients list that might be having an effect on your body, and that is this little molecule here. That's right, that's your friend and mine, caffeine. Now, caffeine is a molecule that all of us are familiar with. We've seen it all over the place. It's in coffee, it's in chocolate, it's in a lot of cola products. Your average cup of coffee, about eight ounces worth, uh, is going to contain roughly 100 milligrams of caffeine. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has stated that 400 milligrams of caffeine per day is about as much as you want to get. Why is that? Caffeine is a stimulant. It makes your central nervous system perk up. You start to release adrenaline. Your heart starts to beat faster. You become more alert. The more caffeine you get, the more your body starts to get energized in a very, very similar chemical cascade to what we call the fight or flight response. Now, if you want to keep pumping caffeine into your body, you're going to energize your body more and your body is an engine. What happens when you rev an engine harder and harder relentlessly? You keep pushing up the RPMs without stopping. What's that engine going to do? Exactly. 
Now, our can of energy drink here contains about 160 milligrams of caffeine. Uh, one of those tiny little uh, shots of five-hour energy, those little guys, that actually contains 200 milligrams of caffeine. I did a little uh, searching online and uh, looked up some numbers that have been published by uh, the NIH on caffeine levels found in various uh, food products. I was uh, sort of surprised to find that Starbucks Blonde Roast Coffee, a big 20-ounce Starbucks Blonde Roast Coffee, contains 475 milligrams of caffeine. You're already above the recommended daily intake of caffeine just with your morning blonde roast. Now, is this really a problem? Well, it can be, because if that's the only caffeine you get during the day, well, all right. But there's caffeine in a lot of foods, there's caffeine hidden in many places, and you may not realize that you're getting an overdose. Let's look at this poor young fellow. This is Davis Allen Cripe, late of South Carolina. Uh, young Mr. Cripe, according to his friends, drank a McDonald's McCafe Latte, which has 178 milligrams of caffeine, a large Mountain Dew diet at 91 milligrams, and an energy drink, they didn't specify which, if we assume it's one of these, that was 160 milligrams, which he chugged. Now that's a total of 429 milligrams, about a third of which he got all at once in a single bolus at the end of his two-hour stint of drinking these things. The poor kid fell over dead. He was feeling lightheaded. He passed out. According to the coroner, his cause of death was cardiac arrest likely related to heart arrhythmia. He had no heart condition, so it's a fairly good guess that all this excess caffeine basically drove his engine to wear out. Now, this is not the only case. I've got a whole list of them down here. They've been documented, and you can find them if you do a search of the news. We have a youngster named Dustin Hood, who drank three 24-ounce monsters. That is 720 milligrams of caffeine, almost twice the U.S. Uh, safe recommended level, then went to play some basketball. His heart was racing, he engaged in a physical activity that made his heart race even more, and he simply keeled over dead right there on the court. In Ireland, in Limerick, there was a youngster named Ross Cooney, just 18 years old. He was said to have consumed four Red Bulls, that's a total of 450 milligrams of caffeine, and then he also went out to shoot some hoops and he also fell over dead. Now, people can take all sorts of meaning from this. Basketball is deadly. No. Admittedly, this is a small sample size, but it is a brief illustration of the sort of thing that can happen when you charge your body too far. So, we now know that what's probably giving you a lot of energy is not even listed on the label up here. But there's one thing that is in this can that is probably giving you the bulk of the jolt that you're supposed to get. The bulk of the energy comes from this dear old friend, sugar. This stuff is loaded with sugar. It says here on the label that uh, one serving is 27 grams of sugar. Well, let's see. Here we have 27 grams of sugar. I measured this out for you. Uh, every good chemist has a sensitive scale in his kitchen. Uh, <clears throat> and as you can see, that's, that's about two good heaping tablespoons of sugar. Uh, and that's just in one serving. Oh, but wait! Remember I said that this can contains two servings? Well, this is the contents of this can in terms of sugar. We've got pretty hefty glob of sugar here right now. And uh, when you consider that sugar is energy, it gets broken down into your body into basically sparks of electricity, you can see how much of that you're starting to get. 
Let's say uh, you, you didn't want to stop at, at just one of these uh, cans. Suppose you drank one, and then a little while later you said, I need more energy, so you drank a second one. Well, in two cans of Monster Energy 16 ounce, this is the amount of sugar you are dealing with, 108 grams. Um, can you imagine somebody handing this to you and saying, here, here's some sugar, it'll give you energy, drink up. I don't think so. That's 16 ounce monster. What about the big 24 ounce monster monsters? You wanna drink two of those? Here's the volume of sugar you're gonna wind up consuming. Well, um, <clears throat> If you're a very active person and you're going to go out and run an Olympic decathlon, well, maybe this isn't a problem for you. But most people out there are not really all that active. Uh, let's look back at this uh, 108 grams that we have here. Um, that's about 420 calories. Uh, if you wanted to burn off that 420 calories, you would have to jog constantly for roughly four and one half miles. If you don't, your body is going to take that energy and store it. And how is it going to store it? It's going to store it as fat. The volume of sugar in two of your 24 ounce monsters, this is going to be the equivalent of about one quarter pound of fat. So, what's happening when you drink your Monster? Yes, you're getting sugar. Yes, you're getting caffeine. You're getting a lot of both. It's giving you energy, but there's really safer ways to get that energy. Take a cup of coffee. That's 100 milligrams of caffeine there. Just put a couple of sugar packs in, enough to make it sweet. That is going to be enough to keep you awake. Or consider this. Why is it you're so tired? Could it be that your body is trying to tell you it needs rest? Maybe you're not getting enough sleep. Yes, perhaps you work a particular shift. Uh, you've got to be up. You're an emergency responder and you need that energy. All right, for a quick burst of energy when it's really needed, this material can be effective. But if you're going to start relying on it, if you're going to start downing one or more of these every day or every other day, all it's going to do is make you think you've got lots of energy, you're going to run your body ragged, and eventually your body will simply give out. And quite frankly, I don't want to be reading your name in that long list of people whose deaths have been attributed to possible overdoses on energy drinks.